is Dr. Minde. So I'm going to discuss um, the anatomy of the of the breasts. Okay. So um, the objectives, introduction, the structure, blood supply, innovation, the fatty drainage, and the applied anatomy. So the breast belongs to the integument system. It's an appendage of the skin and functionally it's part of the reproductive system because it responds to sexual stimulation and helps in the feeding of the uh, young ones. So it's divided into four quadrants. Okay, this is an upper inner, lower inner quadrant, upper outer and lower outer quadrant. Usually there's what you call the tail part of the breast tissue extending towards the axilla. And these are the quadrants, lower outer, upper outer, upper inner, lower inner. So it's an appendage of the skin. It's considered as an, a modified apocrine sweat gland. And the apex of cells become part of secretion and breaks off. Remember what we said about apocrine glands. They secrete, um, and when they, the secretions are released, the apex of the cell breaks off. The breast, of course, is common. The breast tissue is common in males and females. And it's found on the lateral aspects of the pectoral region between second to the sixth ribs, okay? And the actually second to the sixth and the nipple is at the fourth intercostal space. It extends from the um, sternum or parasternal line to the mid axillary line. It's surrounded by superficial fascia and usually rests on deep fascia. So this is the breast, second to sixth um, rib at the fourth intercostal space that's where you have your nipple and then it, it's it's made up of glandular tissue which is a breast tissue made up of 15 to 20 lobes that empty through lactiferous ducts around the nipple areola area the ducts dilate to form lactiferous sinuses that um, open at the nipple and then adipose which is just fat and you can see the adipose is separated into lobules by scepter and these are the suspensory ligaments of the breast, suspensory ligaments of copper. And the breast is separated from the breast wall by a retromammary space, okay, containing areolar tissue. And posterior to that, we have the breast bed, which is formed by four muscles, pectoralis major and minor, serratus anterior and part of external oblique abdominis. Before you get to your intercostal muscles and ribs. So it's usually fixed to the skin and underlying fascia by the fibrous connective tissue, which are the suspensory ligaments of copper. You can see they fix the brain to the uh, underlying skin and to the, the um, underlying fascia, fixed to skin and underlying fascia by this fibrous connective tissue. So you have the suspensory ligaments of copper, and these ligaments usually may retract when breast tumor is present. The left breast, um, in most cases, is usually slightly larger than the right. The base of the breast is circular and uh, either flattened or concave, and it's separated from pectoralis minor and major by fascia and retromembry space. That's what we see. There's retromembry space separating the breast tissue from the breast bed. So this is your retromembry space, and this is the pectoralis major. So you can appreciate this retromembry space here. Again, this is the glandular uh, portion, and this is the adipose. You can appreciate the dilatations of the side lactiferous sinuses and lactiferous ducts. So it has an outer convex surface that is covered by skin. Then we have the nipple at the fourth intercostal space. And remember, the nipple is conical or cylindrical, and usually um, uh, with prominence below the center. So this is the the nipple area where the ducts op uh, open and it's at the fourth intercostal space. So the nipple is surrounded by areola. The areola is pigmented and this region actually becomes even darker during pregnancy. The thin skinned region um, lacks hair and sweat glands around the nipple areola region. It lacks hair and sweat glands and usually contains areola glands. So the are areola region contains dark pigment that intensifies or increases with pregnancy. It also contains circular and radial smooth muscle fibers, and the nipple contains high um, nerve fibers. So when there's circling of the nipple, 
the nerves will have high sensitivity and they will cause um, they will sense that suckling and cause the smooth muscle fibers to contract and that will lead to nipple erection each breast has 15 to 20 lobes and each lobe opens through one lactiferous duct these ducts are arranged radially and are embedded in the connective tissue and adipose so the lobes are composed of lobules and the lobules are composed of alveola remember we said the secretory portion of um, um, exocrine glands could be tubular or alveolar so when the alveolar it means the secretory portions are rounded so the lactiferous ducts converge around the areola they form ampulla okay which are dilated portions collection sites for the lact of the lactiferous sinuses so the ducts become contracted at the base of the nipple so we have the secretory part of the of the uh, breast or the glandular portion it changes with hormonal signals so at the onset of menstruation there are different hormones during pregnancy the, as the mammary glands begin to enlarge at the second month and after birth for, uh, as you secrete colostrum this is the first milk that contains high antibodies so the breast generally responds to the changes in the hormonal signals either during men the menstrual cycle or during pregnancy or even after birth now we have the tail of spence which we said when the breast tissue um, in the upper outer quadrant extends into the axilla so the tail of spence is the axillary tail of the breast it usually passes under the axillary fascia and can easily be mistaken for an axillary lymph node so we have surface tissue surround surrounding the surface and fills the space between the lobes and this fatty uh, tissue or adipose is what gives the breast its form and size usually there's no fatty deposits around the nipple areola it's mostly at the surface and in between the lobes so what is the blood supply to the breast so we have um, the main arteries are branches from subclavian artery and branches from axillary artery remember subclavian um, continues at the outer border of first rib continues as axillary artery so axillary artery is going to give second part of axillary first part of axillary will give superior thoracic that may supply the um, upper quadrants second part will give lateral thoracic and thoracocromial that will supply the lateral quadrants of the breast okay then the medial quadrant of the breast is supplied by internal mammary artery which is a branch from the first part of subclavian artery so it's first descending branch of subclavian artery and supplies the intercostal spaces and the breast through perforators and this vessel usually can be used for coronary bypass surgery then we have intercostal arteries and these intercostal arteries may come from the uh, like posterior intercostals from um, thoracic aorta may supply the breast from the posterior aspect so this uh, are numerous branches from internal and external mammary artery and, and they support uh, supply the intercostal spaces of the of the breast so first you have the internal thoracic supplying on the medial aspect from first part of subclavian lateral aspects lateral thoracic and thoracoacromial from the lateral quadrants they are from the second part of axillary the superior portion can also get some blood supply from superior thoracic which is first part of axillary then coming from posterior intercostals the lateral quadrant may get some blood supply so that's perforating branches of internal mammary or internal thoracic from first part of subclavian will support supply the medial um, quadrant so that's how you explain the blood supply of the of the breast the veins will correspond to these um, arteries so they follow the corresponding vessels so again um, you have internal mammary to subclavian vein lateral thoracic and thoracochromial veins to axillary and so on and so forth so the breast is innervated by um, cutaneous nerves of the, th of the thorax from the spinal segment t3 to t6 and the lymphatics are significant most of the glandular lymphatics drain into the anterior group of axillary lymph nodes, the petrol group then um, this from anterior uh, lymphatics from pectoral group will move into central 
that move into apical, which will drain into deep cervical nodes, which are, uh, are um, the subclavian nodes. So mainly from the lateral quadrant, they go to anterior axillary nodes. From there, lymphatics go to central, then apical, then the deep cervical nodes. Then the medial quadrants can drain into the parasternal lymph nodes or lymph nodes around the internal mammary artery and can also spread to the lymphatics of the contralateral breast. You can see you can have lymphatics spreading to the other breast. You can have medially to the parasternal lymph nodes or around internal mammary vein, laterally to the anterior group of um, axillary lymph nodes, which will later move to central, then apical, then to deep cervical nodes. Inferiorly, lymphatics can go to subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph nodes, and superiorly, they can go to the supraclavicular lymph nodes at the neck. The lymphatics from the skin and nipoareolar region, they form large channels, usually uh, um, will eventually drain into the anterior group of axillary lymph nodes. Remember, these axillary lymph nodes also drain the lymphatics from the arm. So when all the nodes are, um, the central and the apical nodes are affected, they are going to um, reduce the lymphatic drainage from the upper limb. So you may get lymphedema of the upper limb, enlargement of the upper limb due to accumulation of lymphatic fluid because the axillary lymph nodes that also drain the upper limb have been affected by cancer. So if the apical and the central groups have been affected, you cannot get lymphatics from the humeral group or the lateral group. So the upper limb will be enlarged because of that. So you have different ways of metastasis. You can get to the mediastinal nodes uh, from the parasternal nodes, so you affect the structures in the mediastinum. Then you can go to the contralateral breast then metastasis can also go to the structures in the um, abdomen, such as liver, ovaries, and peritoneum, by uh, getting into the subdiaphragmatic lymphatics in the abdomen. So those are the major routes of. Um, so to the contralateral breast, you can get to um, the the um, mediastinal structures through the parasternal nodes, and you can get into liver, the ovaries, and abdominal organs through the subdiaphragmatic lymph nodes. So we have various anomalies of the breast. You can have an, the nipple ideally is supposed to be erect, but it can be inverted, and that could be congenital or due to cancer. Some uh, uh, people can have ectopic nipple, nipple in an abnormal position, and you can have um, numerous nipples like polythelia or hyperthelia, uh, and this is because Usually, like any other mammals, the milk line is usually from mid-clavicular to mid-inguinal. But in humans, all the uh, nipples and breast tissue will degenerate except in the pectoral region. That's what will form the breast. But if they persist, then you may tend to find nipple anywhere along this milk line, which is mid-clavicular to mid-inguinal. You can have a mastia when there's absent breast, micromastia when the breast is very small, macromastia when it's big, gynecomastia is breast development of males in the areola region. This is commonly seen in uh, males who smoke marijuana at puberty or some drugs are also associated with development of gynecomastia. So you can see there's nipple, um, retraction and there's an element of pure orange, orange peel appearance because of lymphedema of the skin with subsequent retraction of the suspensory ligaments of copa. And this is a retraction of the nipple. You can see we have an external wound here. This is a breast with breast cancer. The axillary tail is affected and we have external wounds there. Thank you. So the other aspects of um, like I asked medical students, how will you use your knowledge of breast anatomy uh, in the management and assessment of your patients? So you need to know the nipple is supposed to be at fourth intercostal space ideally, but it could be pendulous in some women. You need to understand there's an axillary tail which can um, be confused for an enlarged axillary node. And in cases of cancer, you have to remember to examine the axillary tail of spans. Then the lymphatic drainage, you need to know that a patient with um, breast cancer, you need to um, examine for spread of met, uh, metastasis. So you have to investigate the brain, do chest x-ray, do abdominal ultrasound to check for spread in the lungs, uh, spinal cord, brain, liver, and so forth. Then the retromammary space, a landmark for simple mastectomy. You need to know the breast bed, 
during radical mastectomy, you may need to get rid of the pec um, major and then the long thoracic nerve lying on serratus anterior. If you injure it during surgery, you may get wing scapula.